but I care about you. You don't know me. You're twisting the story a little bit and I'm starting to get a little uncomfortable. Do you think there's an afterlife? I don't. So you've got no hope in your death? If you put it that way, no, I don't. I think when you die, you die. So what do you tell your kids when they say to you, Mommy, I don't want to die. I tell them to eat their vegetables. Uh, stay healthy until you die? Exactly. Uh, do you give any credence to the Bible, particularly the book of Genesis, which says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth? I believe in evolution. I don't believe in the Bible. Have you ever read the Bible? It's the world's biggest selling book of all time. Not cover to cover, but I was raised in a very fundamentalist, southern missionary, Baptist, very conservative household. So I'm by no means an expert, but I am familiar with the Bible. So you're familiar with the famous Bible verse, the wages of sin is death? <laughs> yes. Did you know that death is wages that God pays you? Did you know that? I know that that's what some people believe. Um, I don't believe that's how the world works. Well, we're all gonna die. I agree, but I don't think it's, it, it's God, right? It's science, it's stupidity. My 13 year old was asking if he could do a flip off of the pier and I said no because I don't want you to die. If I allowed him it'd be my stupidity that caused his death not his wages of sin and God imposing death on him. But he's gonna die anyway he can die healthy he could die next week Absolutely. next month or next year or when he's 83 but he's gonna die. It's like a judge in a court of law who says to a criminal who's committed serious crimes mm -hmm. we're paying you in the death sentence mm -hmm. you've murdered three young ladies this is your wages, this is what you've earned, this is what you deserve. Are you morally a good person? I think so, yes. So what standard do you judge by as an evolutionist? I think if it's something that you wouldn't want someone to do to you or your children or your family. So think... you're quoting Jesus? No. You said do to others, you should have them do to you, the golden rule. I don't know that that attributes back to Jesus. No one knows that. Jesus wasn't the originator of that quote. How do you know that? Uh, I don't, but how do you know that it was? It's written in the Sermon on the Mount where he said it. That's a book of fiction, right? No one knows. That's a massive statement. That means that you know what people know and what they don't know, 8 billion people on the earth. All you can say is, as far as I know, no one knows, but I can't say no one knows. So let's, sure. let's see if you're a good person. How many lies have you told in your life? Oh, I don't, I don't know. Quite a few? Of course, everyone has. Have you ever stolen something, even if it's small, irrespective of its value in your whole life? Uh, yes. What do you call someone who steals? A thief. So what are you? I have stolen in my life. I don't think that I'm a thief. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Sure. Would you use your mother's name as a cuss word? No. Why not? Because it's, it's not a nice thing to do. It's a horrible thing to do. It's dishonoring her, using her name in place of a filth word beginning with S. But that's what you've done with the name of the God that gave you your children and gave you life and eyesight and hearing and all the blessings of this life. It's called blasphemy, Brandy, and it's so, so serious in God's eyes, it's punishable by death in the Old Testament. Appreciate your patience with me and your honesty. Jesus said, if you look with lust, this is in the Sermon on the Mount, you commit adultery in your heart. Have you ever looked with lust? Yeah, sure, everyone has. Brandy, I'm not judging you. This is for you to judge yourself. You told me you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterer at heart. And you have to face God on Judgment Day, whether you believe in him or not. If he judged you by the Ten Commandments, we've looked at four of them, on Judgment Day, would you be innocent or guilty? I'd be guilty, but everyone would be. It's exactly what the Bible says. I'm guilty, you're guilty. We've all earned our wages. The wages of sin is death. But do you know the last part of that famous verse? Uh, not off the top of my head. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And the reason God can save you from death and hell is because he's rich in mercy and he provided a savior. Jesus suffered and died on the cross, took the punishment for the sin of the world so that you could be forgiven. In other words, we broke God's law, the Ten Commandments, Jesus paid the fine. That's what happened on the cross. And then he rose from the dead, defeated death, and if you'll just simply repent and trust in Jesus for your salvation, not your goodness, because that's not going to work on judgment there, just trust in Jesus. It's so simple. I'm not trying to convince you that Genesis is the Word of God or the Bible's the Word of God. I'm saying, Brandy, this is your eternal salvation. This is the salvation of your children. I'm just saying, please believe the gospel that Jesus took the punishment so you can go free on Judgment Day, so you can have everlasting life. So what do you think about what we talked about? Uh, I have thought about it. Again, I was raised in that environment, and I've spent a lot of time thinking about it, and it's something I don't believe in. I'm very comfortable in that decision, and I'm not trying to impose my non-belief on you. Mm. I don't think that you should try to impose your beliefs on me. But I care about you. You don't know me. 
But if you're in danger, I don't have to know you. If you're going to jump off the end of a pier onto concrete on the bottom thinking you're going to be fine, I have to say, Brandy, don't do it, don't do it. Do you know I can prove to you God's existence in about 30 seconds? You can, but okay. Do you want me to give it a try? Sure. Every building is proof of a builder. Buildings don't build themselves. When you look at a building, you know there was a builder intuitively. Even if he died 100 years ago, you know there was a builder because buildings don't build themselves. Every painting is proof of the painter. You don't have to see the painter. He could have died 500 years ago, but you know there was a painter mm -hmm. because paintings don't paint themselves. Mm -hmm. And creation is evidence of God's creative hand. You can see the genius of his hand everywhere you look and your children and creation and flowers and birds and seasons and fruits. All those things show us that God exists, which we know intuitively and we have a conscience so we know right from wrong. Keep that in mind and examine my motive. I don't get anything out of doing this. I felt as awkward with you as you have with me. But the reason I do it is because I care about you. I'm like a doctor with a cure to cancer in his pocket. You've got <laughs> cancer and don't know it, and I want to give you the cure. And the only way it's going to happen is if I can convince you of the disease so you'll appreciate and appropriate the cure. I, I want to refute a couple of things you yeah, said. Yeah, sure, go for it. My, my children are not from God. My children are a result of an activity that we all know what produces children. Uh, God has nothing to do with that. You made your children's eyes, 137 million light-sensitive cells. If their eyes got poked out, yet they come to you and say, Mommy, I need another eye. Could you make another eye? I guarantee you weren't thinking of your children's eyes when they were conceived. You were looking at the eyes of the person you love. God's given us the ability to reproduce after our own kind. That's a miracle. The baby's a miracle. It's life is a miracle. It's it's the genius no, of God's creative that's, hand. That's science. That, that's science. You're twisting the story a little bit, and I'm starting to get a little uncomfortable. So. I do apologize. I didn't. What did I twist? You keep going back. Uh, you, you're twisting my words, right? So you're 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 taking thing. You're taking facts and twisting it into feeling, um, and, and that's 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 indicative of most. Uh, kind of right-wing, super conservative Christians. Um, Do you remember what I did that with your words? Because I'd in, like to apologize. How did I twist your words? Well, I wanted to talk about, right, science, and um, you're, you're saying that my kids are created by God, but they're not. My kids are created from an act that is, has nothing to do with God, and it, according to what you say, right, is, is lustful and very... Um, no, God made Adam and Eve naked and told them to have <laughs> sex. There's nothing wrong with sex. It's not lustful to be married and make children. So, it's a wonderful idea. My parents did that with me, and I'm thankful. <laughs> I, I, I'm thankful too, but I don't think that God has anything to do with it. Okay, well, I appreciate you listening to me. I hope you'll think about it, and um, I wish you all the best. Likewise, thank, thank you. you. Make sure you check out the Living Waters podcast. And this is the Evidence Study Bible. It's everything I've learned in more than 50 years of reaching out to the lost. It's packed with information on apologetics, cults, evolution, atheism, and much more. Over 1,900 pages, including 200 of the most commonly asked questions of the Christian faith. And make sure you check out the Starter Kit. It contains four of our most popular tracks, including 50 Ten Commandment Coins. Available at livingwaters.com. If you want to see a staunch atheist change your mind and then embrace the gospel, you're going to love Atheist Changes Mind with this info. You can watch it right now by clicking up to your left.